Kyle and, and Ed and team, um, you know, invited me out to, to do this, and I'm, I'm super excited um, to be talking about careers. And those, we'll make it very interactive. I think the, the purpose of me doing this, obviously, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about my experience over my career, um, and then and then we'll field any questions that you guys have. I've done, I, I think this is now probably my 16th or so school in terms of undergrad school of doing this, so I really enjoy doing this. I think people development is just something that in the world of finance is, is and just more broadly in the career career side is, is lacking and that I think we could do a better job of it uh, from learning from each other's experiences. So I encourage you guys to, to, you know, let's, we can make it interactive and I also encourage you afterwards to just think about, you know, what you've learned or what you've learned about yourself and how that you know how that will impact the decisions you'll make in your career whether it's tonight or over the course of your your time here at stanford or afterwards um i think that introspection is really really important so i'll say that number one number two i mean the goal of my talk even though i've kind of steeped in finance background isn't to convince anyone to do a finance job or not it's to more shed light on some of the questions that often people have going in um, share things that I've learned that have been successful for me. Um, and then number three, like help you guys just start on this journey and then kind of you know, continue through your career. Um, so a little bit about my background. Um, so I, as in the finance world, I started out uh, at Goldman Sachs. I, I spent six years there, first in investment banking um, as an associate for three years, and then I switched over to private equity. Um, as an associate, I worked in the Financial Institutions Investment Banking Group and was very fortunate to, um, to be able to work on, to be actually lead, lead some of the largest transactions in financial services. It just happened to be kind of right place, right time, and I'll talk about that a little bit. But also, um, you know, just being able to step up and be like, hey, I want to really do this and I think I can do a good job, and then proving that out by, by how you work. And so I was a lead associate basically on the largest fig m deal ever when GE divested uh, G Capital and Goldman Sachs was the global coordinator for that. So we helped GE divest their entire global financial services business. I also led as an associate of the IPO of Synchrony, which at that time was the largest, one of the largest ever in FIG and the largest in Facebook. So super, you know, proud of bo both of those transactions. I, I, was, I was in the team that um, advised Apple on launching Apple Card. Um, this started a few years back when I was still there. So kind of very cross-functional. I think that's one thing, as you guys think about careers to, to launch, you know, places to launch your careers, um, you know, think about what types of experiences you want, how much breadth, how much depth you want in different things that, you know, whether it's strategy, whether it's financial, um, or whether it's operations, whatever it may be. Um, I think and you'll be surprised in putting yourself in these positions to then get all these, you know, get these different opportunities that have then helped me through my career and kind of launch that. Um, after that, kind of doing a lot of cool stuff in investment banking, I decided to switch over to um, private equity. Uh, which to me, it's kind of a natural switch. I think as an associate, it's a little bit different than you guys might do it as analysts, perhaps. But I think for me, it was making that switch over from now advising companies as a strategic advisor, now over to investing in companies as a principal and owner of these companies. So I recruited for PE, and I actually ended up joining pri the private equity group in Goldman Sachs, which is very independent from the banking group. Um, Goldman runs a $100 billion fund. Uh, in private equity on the equity side. Uh, and so I joined there as a vice president and then leading investments in financial services and in technology. So that was really, really cool. And then last year I got the opportunity, actually this is kind of the entrepreneurial side of finance, I guess, to help build out um, Varde, which is a $15 billion fund, their global PE business um, in the US and in One Asia. Thing. I, two things I'll say. I actually in undergrad worked in sales and trading, uh, loved the markets and loved kind of, that was my first foray into the world of finance. Unfortunately, I worked at the mortgage-backed trading desk in 09, and it was not, it kind of didn't end well, right? So I think, so to me, it was kind of, it was, it's was, it was like a dichotomy of, wow, this is really cool, I'm learning a lot, with like, oh, holy shit, this is like, this is maybe why I should rethink going into finance, because the world is like falling apart around us. And frankly, I think you guys in the next three years are gonna step into something not as bad as 09, but it's, it's inevitable, right? There's gonna be a recession, so you should, I mean, it shouldn't affect any of your career decisions. But I think what I learned from that experience is just really how people behave and act in times of crises and, and in times of, you know, just when things aren't going your way. And I think that was an extremely valuable learning experience for me. I started out my career in management consulting and that had an, 
like an immense effect on me now as I look at companies as an investor because that I learned how to look at companies in an operational way and, and how to really understand strategy. So we'll get to all that. I know there's a lot of questions that came in before the session on, on some of those things. So we'll get to that. And then one thing that's been really important to me is this people development part. I, I hit on that earlier. Um, you know, very fortunate to have kind of an excel. I've been very fortunate to have an accelerated career path, you know, before the age of 30 and the things that I've been able to do. At the same time, I think finance is a world, and Kyle and I were talking about this, there isn't enough structural things in place to help people in terms of you know, guidance, in terms of careers, and, and even at the jobs that you do. Like I've, at Goldman, I was very involved in recruiting and, and all the, so I, led you know, I will talk to you about how I look at candidates and how I think you can kind of differentiate yourself and things like that. Um, and then the thing that I'm doing now, where I've actually started this thing because of, I've gone to enough schools now and there was interest in this, where um, we put to, I put together programming for on the career side where I bring back people um, in the industry who actually are z zero to five years out of undergrad. I actually have a slide on this. Um, so those are those, all the schools where I've spoken to but also where they're involved in this. But effectively, I bring back people who are zero to five years out of undergrad and then do kind of interactive sessions just virtually and then invite students who are interested in it to participate because the best way to learn about careers I think is from understanding either getting internships and doing them or being involved in you know asking questions and, and talking to people who are interested in it so we can we'll, we'll get to that at the end but I just that's something that, I, that, I, that I'm passionate about in terms of giving back we'll start with the top so this is of questions that I've gotten over time on like what you know, in terms of different schools, like what, what people like to hear about. Before I jump into that, I want to just open it up to the floor on, on some of the questions you guys have. So what are things you want to get out of this? What are things that are top of mind as it comes to careers in finance, or just generally how maybe you should think about any career? Let's start with that. Yeah. I guess a question that I've always had as a freshman going into some either finance or consulting field was what is how should one make the decision between whether you're trying to go at a young age towards like a big firm that has a nice name and could be a great thing for your resume to yeah. the ladder yeah. versus going to a smaller maybe boutique firm to really like hone skills and learn and have much more of a leadership role? Yeah, okay. The question is how do you make a decision, but it's a good question, between going to a large fund firm uh, which, which you have a very streamlined experience that everyone gets and everyone knows, hey, I worked at JP Morgan, so you know what you're getting, versus a boutique, small firm. So and let me ask you this, when you say boutique, is it like in banking or like in investing or like what, what, what type of an Specifically like, for example, my interests are in consulting, like, consulting, right? In, in consulting, yeah. as well as possibly like starting out with IB. Okay, okay, so. okay. And uh, before I answer that, like what, what, drove, what is driving you towards consulting or, or, or possibly IB? The yeah, 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 yeah. It's the idea of being able to problem solve, and not only just problem solve, but being able to make a larger social impact upon the communities around you. Yeah, me. yeah. I really love that idea. Okay, so cool. So, so the idea of kind of making an impact on a company or something that's larger <laughs> than yourself. So it's very. That's that's. That, I mean, that's that's actually a very kind of mature answer to think about what what consulting does. And I'll answer this, and I'll be very candid in all my answers, and so you guys can debate me or whatever if you want. But I think in consulting, I think there is. There is a difference from the types of problems that you saw from like a McKinsey, Bain, you know, BCG, Deloitte, like that, whatever the, the top, they call it top, but I think the nature of those, there's, that's different. That, that, when I say different, that's, that, is your, that is in some sense like, yes, we know the experience you're getting, it's a very streamlined experience, it's gonna be tough problems you're solving, et cetera. The lens that you need to take on to kind of the more boutique type firms is just, really be critical into what types of projects that they're working on and, and make sure that they're actually strategy type projects and, and or the combination of strategy and operations that you're really looking for. I think a lot of firms, you know, just I'll be honest, right, a lot of the Fortune 500 companies when they look for consulting services tend to gravitate towards hiring a top seven, eight consulting firm, right? So when you're going to a, small, if, to a smaller firm, I think you'd be very critical in terms of why are they hiring this company? Like, is it a specific niche that they have? So a lot of firms, you know, involve themselves in like bankruptcy type consulting or, you know, uh, post M&A type stuff. So if there's things that are interesting to you that this firm does really well, definitely. Number two, ask them about the types of projects that they're working on, et cetera, and then make sure that's aligns with your like understanding of what the thing is, right? So I think it's just really important to know what you're getting yourself into there. So that's on consulting. I think you'll get a very streamlined experience across all kind of the top firms. And it, when it comes beyond the top firms, there's a lot of great firms out there. Just make sure you understand what niche that they operate in. That niche is like, 
interesting to you, and then you get a sense of what projects that they're operating in. And, and so that, again, that is something that like, you, you find interesting. Focus more on the projects. Yeah, I think you should really critically ask them, what types of you know, engagements are you guys on right now? Like, what, would I be, what are the things I'd be working on, et cetera? Um, I think when it comes to banking, I would say the experience at a, at a bulge bracket or even a boutique is very similar. So if you told me I, I worked a summer at JP Morgan versus I worked a summer at Evercore, yeah, even though they're kind of not, you know, one's bulge bracket and one's more el elite boutique or whatever you want to call it, my takeaway from that is, okay, generally, like, they got a good experience. And, and frankly, I think at, at Nevercore, they probably got a little bit more of a technical experience because it's a much more, like, much smaller firm and they hire slightly more selectively. Um, but I think across the board, the banking experiences tend to be similar. However, again, when you get to more regional banks, et cetera, I would, again, diligence the types of deals that they're on, the types of, because the smaller, the fr and then this is the same advice I give to people who are looking at smaller PE firms, like, make sure you get a good sense of the people that you're going to be working for and then, like, like the projects that you're going to be working on because a lot of times you're then going to be spending two to three years there so you want to really understand kind of what you're getting into. I'd say so to answer your question on the banking side a little bit more streamlined when it, beyond the bulge bracket I think on the consulting side you have to be a little bit more diligent on the types of deals and types of projects that so they're working on. Um, PE is different so PE I would say look I, I think the of all the schools I've spoken to like maybe like 10 to 12 students out of undergrad have gone to like mega fund PE right out of undergrad, right? So the KKRs, Apollos, you know, Warburgs, et cetera, of the world, right? Carlisle's, et cetera. So sure, there's a lot, you know, there's, there's definitely, I think everyone in this room is more than capable of doing it. It's just the supply of it isn't there, you know? So I think you have to, right, that's one thing. Number two, I think PE is great to work out of undergrad. Again, if you kind of understand what, what, what is that the firm is doing. I think the PE thing versus banking, and I'll leave consulting aside for a second, the PE thing versus the banking is where there's a huge difference. In banking, when you go work as a two-year analyst, I know exactly what you're gonna be doing if I was gonna hire you as a PE associate two years later. I know you're gonna be working on financial modeling, deal experience, you know, process management, et cetera. So it's a very streamlined experience. PE, however, is so dependent on, are they in fundraising mode? Like, what is the size of their fund? Like, have they divested most of their funds already? Are they, again, going back to raise money? Is it a deal-oriented fund or is it an operations-oriented fund, right? Like, what industry sector is it working on? So there's so many different things about PE firms that you need to understand before you go and make sure that aligns with, because in some sense, if you, if you do a banking job, it gives you a lot more exit ops than if you do a PE job that ends up doesn't working out kind of exactly what you wanted. So I just want, I think you need to make sure you understand the type of fund you're going to for that to work out. I think if you go and it makes sense for you, we could actually put you further ahead than a banking job could. But again, this is where it's kind of like comparing apples and oranges a little bit. Does that make, does that help? Okay, cool. All right, cool. What else? Yeah. Uh, if, you're, if you're interested in just investing yeah. or like more, uh, you know, venture capital and stuff. Okay. Uh, is it better to, you know, get down and dirty and work and start up a technology firm that's like, you know, actually creating products or is it better to go to the bank and do Good question. And let me ask you this, like, why are you interested in investing? Um, just the opportunities to, to like invest on a particular thesis. Okay. Like, build companies in particular. Okay, cool. So interesting. You mentioned build companies and, and then and thesis things. So um, so building companies part is more on the VC side, which you, which you accurately like highlighted, right? I think personally, again, this is one person's opinion, but I've seen this a lot. If you want to go into VC, a lot more value is placed on operational side of things and then actually like helping build a company on, you know, on, on that side. So again, all else being equal, not knowing exactly your background, I would say I think banking could help you, but not as much as the, 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 the startup or whatever company experience. That said though, you would be really careful because like just working at a startup for a summer isn't going to get you kind of in. So you have to kind of find the right startup that is in that phase of like, are they going from like X to like three X, right? And what are you, so that's number one. So what type of startup that you're joining? Number two, like what are you going to be doing at that startup? So is it just like, if you're going to be jack of all trades, that's fine. But I would advise you to do that like over the course of a school year. Because if you do just a summer internship at a startup, then like eight weeks, you're in the door, you kind of get an email account, you set up, then like the internship's done. You know what I mean? So you kind of have to like prove that you have that experience of seeing through all the different aspects of the VC. Because let's step back, right? Why, why, why am I hiring on the VC side someone to come in 
it's a to, to paramount that they understand how these companies work and what are the challenges that these things run into because then as I'm looking at a hundred different opportunities on a given week then or a month or whatever I know which is like makes sense and which doesn't and, and all the all those skills that I'm building out so in, in, in or, because of that a lot of times they look for people who've exited like good good companies or have had a lot of experience at, at operational experience at good companies that said I don't I think a financial experience could translate if you build like an expertise in like a sector, et cetera. Um, but again, I think VC opportunities that are quality ones are like a little few and far between like right out of undergrad. So you just have to diligence that really carefully and, and, um, and kind of make sure that fits in line with what you're looking for. Um, yeah, does that help? Is that, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. Uh, given that uh, sort of top firms tend to prefer to uh, interns uh, in their junior year, yeah. what would you recommend that we do in our freshman and sophomore yeah. summer? Yeah, that's a really good question. I get asked that a lot now because obviously the in, in, like interviews and internship cycles are so much earlier now that they're recruiting people like end of sophomore year to like go, get a, basically a junior internship, whatever the case might be along the cycle, or now over the summer. Um, my suggestion is kind of your freshman year, I'd say, okay, so starting back, your freshman year, like school year, you should really spend trying to a get up to speed on like this, this the school and stuff i think number two just getting a sense of like what the lay of the land is and and obviously you guys are in this room because you're 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 down that path um and then figuring out like what is a feasible internship that co combines kind of my interest in business and and like companies with like some sort of a professional type environment etc so i my suggestion for freshman year internship is find the best job that you can get that can kind of set you on this path towards, if it is business careers that you're interested in, like whether it's going and working in like the finance function of a company, right? Or going and working at a startup and doing business along with other operational things, or trying to get an internship at a regional bank, or you know, whatever it might be within that realm. I think all those are fine, as long as you kind of fit that into your overall story. And then target using that, and then targeting something for your sophomore internship, because that, those are like the, because you kind of have to ladder up. You're right. No one's going to give you an internship at like a investment bank, you know, for the most part, your freshman year. But just getting some sort of a finance business experience is going to put you in a better spot than otherwise. Um, number two, I think what becomes even more important, especially if you're looking at like traditional management consulting or banking jobs, and they're they are pushing recruiting kind of your end of sophomore year, beginning of junior year, is used to be that your experience carried a lot of weight, now there's as much equal weighting on you understanding the job that you're getting into, right? So I think they really wanna know, okay, you're a sophomore, but do you, do you really wanna be in investment banking? Like, what do you know about investment banking? Like, who have you talked to? Or like, why do you think you'll be a good investment banker? Like, those types of things. So I think I would spend equally amount of time in your sophomore year understanding why you wanna do the job that you wanna do, because it should make up a little bit for the work, you know, because you all will have different work experience and it's hard for me to gauge, like, is this internship at like X startup better than that internship at a finance company, blah, blah, blah. So I think you have to kind of bolster that with, hey, look, this is what I've done, but this is how it translates to why I really want to do this job. And like, this is why I want to do this job, right? So I think you have to bring in both of those into the mix than ever was, you know, important previously. Um, is, is that helpful? Like, is there anything specific on it? Okay, cool, that's helpful, all right. Um, what else? Yeah. I guess no. to like elaborate a little bit on this question, I guess what you're trying to say is that like freshman year specifically, it's not really a big deal on like which exact, like whether it's IV or whether it's like private equity or whether it's venture capital. Like as long as you're doing something, I guess if you want to go into finance, like that's like of worth and in a professional. Experience. Yeah, I think look if if that you've determined that you're exactly if you've determined in your freshman year that you want to go down this path of you know finance business type careers, I think then you should focus your time on what is the best job I can get. You know, and so what again don't. Like, go as hard as you can, try to get something, but understand that, you know, hiring someone, you all understand, like, I think people who've been through the process, there's natural challenges to getting a job as a freshman where people are like, well, what course, you, like, what are you adding to the table? What are you bringing to the table that you can really help? Therefore, I think just even if it's like unpaid or whatever it is, like, get yourself out there and, and build on it. And then, then, the, the, then the challenge becomes then using that experience to then carve out what your story is like whatever you end up doing say hey this taught me x y and z and it caused me to be more interested in you know why and whatever and then therefore i'm here to do this so i think it's very hard to be prescriptive on both of these because 
the supply demand dynamics do not favor freshmen as, a, as an internship seeker, but I think what favors you guys is if you're hungry enough and kind of say, hey, I did whatever I did as a business internship that caused me to like X part of business even more, that's why I'm here, I think that puts you in like a more favorable position with someone who maybe you know, isn't coming from that same exact thing. Again, if you don't get an internship in the summer, like that's finance, like to your point, it's not the end of the world. Like do something that advances your candidacy in some way, right? So whether it's operationally at a company, strategy, uh, something, right? And, and we can talk about some of these questions specifically if you guys have them, but that's just my experience has been that always helped versus like not doing something non-ancillary in the business world. Yeah, you had a question, yeah. Yeah, I guess I'm kind of comparing it to like technology internships. Yeah. I have slightly previous experience, like what can you do to like differentiate yourself in the process? So like with tech, like you can like, you know, show like portfolios like previous applications, yeah. like websites you built, yeah. like your data, like all that kind of stuff. Like yeah. you like build out like a stock Hedge yeah. Like hedge funds and stuff, but actually like send that with your application. Good question. I think this is kind of the wild west, right? So this, and I'll answer your question with you specific advice. Um, the question is what can you do to differentiate yourself as a freshman or sophomore early on without having a lot of work experience beforehand? I think, first of all, one thing I think, one thing I really want to know, or, or people will really want to know, is like, are you genuinely interested in finance? So it's your point on the GitHub and things like that. That shows you genuine interest in, in technology. So some combination or a combination of you know personal trading, which it's sometimes like it's hit or miss. Like if you go to hedge fund, they're like, I trade my portfolio. They're like, so what? So does everyone else? So you kind of have to balance that with with other stuff. So being involved in school groups, right, where you're trading, that that's that's definitely helpful. Um, I think then doing things like the Wall Street prep, you know, things like that that aren't super resource, that aren't super expensive, but just some sort of certification around that. Look, I think at the end of the day, like, you don't even need, you don't need a lot of that. I think it genuinely, you probably need two things that even supersede those things. One is just going out there and like meeting people and, and making good impressions on people, right? I think that at the end of the day, this networking idea. It's more just connections. Yeah, just, just connect with people and, and help A, figure out what they're doing and then be like, figure out if that's something that you want, you're interested in doing and then see building a natural relationship that makes them be like, all right, this person is genuinely, seems like interested in finance and I think is capable of doing this, let's give them an interview, right? So I, I think a lot of people in the networking side get really like intimidated by, oh my God, I need to have like, you know, the, all these emails written out and then like keep a tracker and all this stuff. Great, I think that if that helps you organize, great. But start reaching out to people like your own alums, you know, people who are in this, et cetera, to get a sense of the things that they're out there doing. And then you'll get a good sense of the types of things that they're looking for. If it's specific on the hedge fund side, look, it's really hard to break into as a junior person. So I, my suggestion to you is like, either go in and like try to do something on the wealth management side, or you know, just as examples, or trade something as part of Stanford, right? Or, um, or get like an unpaid internship during the school year at a sales and trading desk. Something like that, that just proves that, look, I am interested in the markets and this is what I'm kind of willing to do. At the same time, building relationships with people in the industry and saying, hey, I know you don't have an internship right now, but just I'd love to learn about what you do such that a year from now I can be like, hey, I've done X, Y, and Z, like do you guys have internships? So kind of take a little bit of a medium term thing here. Um, you can still apply to a lot of, a lot, and the other thing is some of these funds, especially in New York, have like early sophomore, maybe, for, I don't think freshman as much, but sophomore, junior programs that you can get in. I've talked to a bunch of people at some of the schools in the Northeast where they've done sophomore programs at some of the large, like Bridgewater, some of these funds have that. So put your hat in the ring for that. Like, if that's interesting to you, do that. And then for them, prove like, hey, I've met two or three people from Bridgewater. I've talked to X, Y, and Z. And then like, I've built my own portfolio that says, and I've done this at Stanford. And like, these are the courses that I'm taking in, you know, economics, whatever. So that to me is like a, full sum portfolio that I'd consider. It's not a one or two things that you do, I think it's just thinking about it holistically and proving that, hey, I am interested in this and I'm capable of doing this, thus you should hire me. And even still, it's a crapshoot. So kind of spread it, you know, make a walk, cast a wide net maybe is what I, the other thing I'd say. Um, what else, yeah? How easy is it to make the transition between different sectors in finance, like from wealth management to domestic banking? Yeah, um, okay, the question is how easy is it to make the transition between different sectors? I think it's a good question. Um, I think it, it takes a little bit of work. So because, and it, it depends on where you are, right? So if your wealth management is your first internship, I think it's easier to make that switch saying, hey, this is the first job that I had out of finance and it taught me X, Y, and Z, et cetera. If that's your third internship, for instance, and then you're trying to make a case, I think people are gonna see like, okay, you've done sales and trading, and, and I'm not a great example because I did a lot of different things, but I think just maybe I'm like in the, 
non 90 percentile of the, you know whatever of the people but i think people are going to see especially when an undergrad want to see some sort of like a career like some sort of a reasonable path so if you did if you did like wealth management then did finance at a company or did a finance at a company and then did like you know m a something and then went to investment making that to me is a path that I can see, all right, you're interested in finance, you know, you're interested in strategy, so you worked at a company, then you did an M&A function that got you into banking, so now I can see like why you're interested in, in, in banking. But if you did finance and then you do wealth management and then you're trying to do banking, then I'll be like, this seems like, why did you go the public route and then go into the private route? So I think, I think depending on what the other experiences are, it's easier and harder. And depending on, like from sales and trading to hedge fund investing is a lot easier than perhaps investment banking to hedge fund investing because one you're dealing with private markets and one you're dealing with public markets and for some of the freshmen I can we can detail what what I'm talking about if you guys have questions but on the hedge fund side you're investing in like mostly public securities so it's helpful to have sales and trading type backgrounds or some sort of trading backgrounds in public securities in private equity you're investing in private companies so it's helpful to have some sort of a private type background of company analysis. But anyway, so, so to answer your question, it depends on like where, when and how you're making that transition and on, on and when on when you're making it, but also how you position it. Like you just say, look, I started in wealth management, really liked the client side of things, really liked like the challenging work of building a portfolio, but I didn't like X, Y, and Z. So, and, I, and this is why I'm kind of going into this. So building your story around this becomes more critical because the question I answered for you, like why networking is important. People are going to want to know like, more than just writing an email that I'm a student from Stanford, like, why are you reaching out to me? Like, what is, what are you interested in? What have you done to like, for me to then spend 20 minutes on the phone with you? To, like, you know what I mean? So I think you have to start thinking about how you're going to build your story. And look, again, it's, you're not going to do that day one. You're going to do that like over the course of your, um, you know, over the course of your like first and second and third and fourth year of college. Is that helpful? Yeah. Yeah. What extent do you think that preparation in the financial fields is an extension of your course load versus intellectual vitality and pursuing your own opportunities and knowledge? Yeah, 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 good question. The question is on preparation, how to best prepare yourself, and then what's the balance between what you're taking and not. Look, I personally think preparation, the, the thing in preparation in general, is the best thing or, or the most important thing candidates can do in general. So, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I mean by preparation, right? Um, so, what I mean by that is just, Every interaction that you go into and, and every person in the industry you talk to, et cetera, the more you can understand what they're doing, the more you can kind of bring to the table in that conversation, I guarantee you, the more that conversation will yield you in the short, medium, long term. Right? If I have a conversation with someone and they've actually researched the group that I've been working in or the deals I've worked on or whatever and prepared like or understand the market, um, understand the market on uh, sorry, um, on like on, on, on what's going on in this space, then I'm much more likely to be like, okay, this person, to your question, how do you be more prepared, actually gets it and he, want, the, he or she wants to be in this space versus if you're not prepared. So the question that you asked specifically on course load versus not, to me, course load is almost like, like a table stakes. In other words, like we're, you guys are all generally go to similar schools, different majors, et cetera. I think the way you think about your course load is if you're going towards more quant type careers, I think then diversifying out of, if your course load is like something social science, taking more quant classes, that again, when you think about this portfolio of experience, you can say, hey, look, I can handle this like analytically, technically challenging job. So I think the course load probably is like 30, 40% of the whole picture. Actually, even probably thirty percent. The other thirty percent is your experiences that you have, and the other forty percent is just you. You know, how are you willing to like put yourself out there, just kind of hustle, but also talk to the right people, put yourself in those positions to be successful. Again, if you're going more traditional path, like a banking consulting, all the companies come to campus, but you still have to kind of differentiate yourself in those conversations. So I think I think the latter on just doing things on your own to a understand what you want to do, but then b make those relationships and improve other people that you kind of are seeking what you're seeking becomes more important, I think, at the end of the day anyway. So I think coursework's important, but this stuff is like equally if not more important. So Carla is not going to say no if you're not an econ major. No, no. And like, take, like Carla is a, not even a great example because they take like three people every year. So my point is like, let's just take even someone like a JP Morgan or a Goldman. Like I've, having been on the, on the recruiting committee like year over year over year, whether it was in banking or PE, I, I recruit as many people who are from non-finance majors than I have from, it's probably 60, 40 non-finance and finance. It's like, can you, are you intellectually like 
you know, able to solve these complex problems and think in a, cl in a clear way? And then are you able to establish why you want to do this job, et cetera? And I'll, I'll go through like the criteria that I look for in terms of candidates, but that's to me more important. Because I mean, who's been through interviews or super days in here? Okay, you guys have been, you, you, like, you know how haphazard these things are, right? Like you go in and then like you have three or six conversations with people and like it ends up just being how well you connect with people, how well you're able to answer those questions under pressure, and then how well you're able to basically come across your candidacy as a holistic picture on your leadership, on your communication, all these other things. So I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, you were a finance major or a, a math major versus not. If you ha give a good interview, chances are you'll get a job, right? If you, if you interview better than the other, you know, three out of every 10 people get a job at these super days. So you know, if you, if you can put yourself in that mindset and just crush it based on your knowledge, I think it's just, it's just coursework's just one part of that whole thing. Uh, yeah, there's a, yeah, you in the back. Yeah, I'll get back to you, yeah. So like when you're applying for internships your freshman year, yeah. since you don't have a lot of like high work experience, what would be helpful to you? Yeah, so I think the, f the freshman year internship is, 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 is an interesting, like someone had asked about early on, early, uh, some, some, you know, th that question earlier. I think it's just important to like target the, one is like target the right types of jobs, right? So I think you should just focus your, I'd say three things. One is target the, t a, like, do you guys have like a career portal where they have specific freshman year internships? Okay, so that's, like, is, is that, is you have that. And what types of jobs are general, I'm just more curious now, what types of, you nodded your head, what types of jobs are out there? Lately I've seen like jobs such as data, Okay, but at like a, at like a startup or like some sort of a company, or like a tech company or something like that, is that fair? All right, what else is that? What else is out there? Are you to my handshake? Handshake. Oh yeah, so like normally, like if I ever go on handshake, you'll see things like like a lot of things I tend to see are like the diversity programs. For okay. The, like the bigger companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, aside from those, you'll see some like winternships or summer extern. Oh, sorry, spring externships is what I've found. Yeah. Like you'll rarely find maybe some like smaller firms you might find like like one that's open to sophomores where like okay. I'll go to them and they'll be like, yo, you should still try to apply even as a freshman. Like, Interesting. See what so you do. I guess what you guys are saying is there isn't like that many freshmen. Today. So great, like that is a challenge, but let's turn that to as an opportunity, right? So now, like you are in a great position where it's like an open land, right? So you go out and then apply to like as many of these like freshman, sophomore, diversity, whatever. If, if it applies to anyone in this room, like go down that path because that's a, historically has been um, a, a, a successful way to kind of foot in the door in some of these, in this, these firms. So just to leave that aside, that's one thing. The other thing is I think you should now, now the question not just becomes how to get someone to hire me, but how do you just even find the firms to apply to to go do it, right? So I think you have to do a lot more work on your end to go reach out to the types of companies that you want, right? So make a list. These are the startups in the area, and you guys are obviously here where there's tons of these type of opportunities. So reach out to the, to the areas um, or the startups or, or companies in that space that are somewhat ancillary to things that you're interested in, right? So what I really wanna see, I really love seeing that initiative of freshmen are out there being like, hey, I want a freshman year internship at X, Y, and Z company because I'm really like interested in consumer retail as an example, whatever the example is. I think just kind of helping people understand why you're reaching out, kind of what you can bring to the table. Say, hey, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm an undergrad here. These are the types of courses that I'm taking. I'm really excited about you know, careers in, in business. That's why I'm reaching out. I really like your business model, X, Y, and Z. So the more you can kind of like arm yourself to that person to like actually reply to your email, I think that the more like well off you are, right? So, so I would kind of bucket these into you know, maybe more up and coming companies where you can apply to be sort of like a, some sort of a you know, jack of all trades summer intern. Then I would kind of take, uh, take on like more established companies and then maybe they don't advertise on your thing, but see if they have internship type opportunities uh, you know, at, at them. And it could be like, it could be even like Cisco's or whatever's of the world that, that, are, that are out there. Or it could be, I think some people in this room have been successful kind of, so, so one is uh, startups, one's more established companies. The third thing is just finance companies, like reach out to investment banks, management consulting companies, even PE funds and say, hey, look, I'm interested in a career in finance. This is kind of what my background is. I really, I read about your company. I was really interested in X, Y, and Z. You know, would love to have a conversation about potentially, you know, whatever, to learn more about your company, whatever. I think you'll turn 20 of those. You'll have four or five people that might have, you know, have coffee or, or have a call with you. And then you could say, hey, look, I'd love to come work, yeah, it sounds really amazing what you're doing, like I'd love to come like work for you. Look, the hit rate on all these is not gonna be that, that strong, so I think you just have to use a kind of a wide kind of net to do that. 
The more I see that you've done your homework, the more I see that you're actually interested in this and are passionate about doing this, the much more likely that they will give you an internship or consider you for an internship for the summer. Kind of all you need, and then if they don't, be like, hey, I'm willing to work over the school year. Like, I'm willing to take Fridays off and come, come down to, you know, frankly, Palo Alto here or whatever in the city and to do that. Um, so just kind of build off of that. Anyone in the room who's been successful in fresh, so is that helpful? Like, I think, I think just kind of taking a much more, don't, I, my point is like, don't let it come to you. Like, don't let it, like your point, don't let it just come online. Just go out and go get that job. Like, go get it. And, and the worst thing is going to happen, you're not going to get it. Oh, well, you weren't going to get it anyway if you didn't do it, right? So I think you just have to go and do it out, put yourself out there and then see what happens, right? I think the freshman year internship is really hard. And look, even if you don't and if you work in something ancillarily, it's not the end of the world. A lot of people in this room, supply and demand has it. There isn't that much supply of freshman year internships. So by definition, people are so successful. So I think make yourself as successful as you can. If not, do get the best job that you can and then build that up to the next thing you can do. Um, question for the people that have been successful for freshman year internships, like, is what I've said been helpful? What, anything else that you guys have done that, that, that was helpful? Yeah. Yeah, so I worked at a family investment office my freshman summer, uh, and I got that connection through a, a mentor of mine who uh, ran, the, ran the, that family office. And so yeah. I think it's so, a mentorship. So don't ask, for, for at least me, my strategy's not been to ask for anything right away, more to try to build a relationship, and then down the road, Oftentimes you'll get an offer without even yeah. trying to ask for it. That's a great example. I have a slide on like networking and kind of best practices. A really good point is that I think folks like you know uh, you guys in the room, I would venture to say you're not taking as much advantage of your alumni ne network as perhaps you could be. Right? You, you have alums that are kind of doing amazing things out there. Again, everyone's time's valuable, et cetera. But I would I would say like. Going out there and just reaching out to people selectively who are, you know, and, and this is trial by fire. Like, you're going to have bad calls, you're going to have bad thing, you know, discussions with people. That's fine. Get it out of the way. Like, become better at it. But to his point, like, if you, especially as a freshman, sophomore, set up, you know, set it up such that, look, I, I'm really interested, I like, really like reading about you, LinkedIn, your business, whatever. I like this area of the space. I'd love to grab coffee or a phone call with you to try to understand what you guys do, um, whatever. And so that they'll say, sure, because it's easier to have that call than saying, hey, I want a job with you. And people are like, well, I don't even know you. You know what I mean? Like, how am I going to give you? And this is awkward. So, you know, probably not going to reply your email. So I think you're just kind of setting it up. Look, you have 10 of those. And then two months later, you'd be like, hey, I'm just checking in. I, I just did a case competition. I did really blah, 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 whatever. And then, like, you know, I'm going to be in San Francisco. Would love to grab coffee. At least now they know who, like, face to a name. Again, probability weighted, each of these are going to be like 10%, but I think when you put it all together, there's going to be 3 out of 20 or you know, 4 out of 25, whatever the numbers are, and those will lead to something versus nothing at all. So it's your alumni base or even people in the industry that you're actually interested in what they're doing, just lob, your, lob something out there and be like, hey, I'd love to find out more. Family offices are great because I think a lot of times family offices are looking for a particular, you know, background or particular like thing that and and they don't, they don't advertise themselves as like having a lot of opportunities and internships but you say hey look i'm a student here i've done this in school i'd love to like hear more about what you do and then later on you're like hey like is it you know could there be an internship opportunity etc so you know kind of building up the relationship side building up kind of your understanding of what they do over time will yield results as well and also do things that work for you. You'll do three, I've given you like five suggestions. You'll do five, all three or four or five of them and you'll see some of them are yielding better because your strengths are face-to-face -face conversation or your strengths are like talking about, you know, whatever, a particular industry. Then like realign what you're doing in, in terms of what's working and what's not and guarantee you, you'll be in a much better spot six months from now than having not done, you know, some of that at all, right? So I think, uh, is that helpful? Okay, cool, awesome. Wow, okay, so uh, let's go to you in the back, and then, yeah, and then we'll come to the front. Yeah, uh, what sort of academic background do you think you should pursue if you're interested in working for a quantitative hedge fund? Yeah, so quant hedge fund, right? I think mm, what I've seen as successful, and I've seen people being successful from, from a lot of different things, I think some version of like a quant, you know, computer science or something like that, along with something in the finance world, I think gives you kind of immediate credence, like if you do an economics with like a computer science or some degree like that. But again, I'm not an expert on the quant side of things, but that's what I've seen as being successful in, in, in some of these things. I think the other thing is 
understanding like the types of candidates, it, there's so many different types of quant funds that are out there that are either looking for people who have like macro background or they're looking for people who can like just trading, building models, et cetera. I think it'd behoove you to like figure out the types of funds that you might be targeting and then looking at the candidates or like first year an analyst and then seeing kind of what backgrounds that they have because some of these funds just operate very differently. So it's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit of like fund specific, firm specific, but if you want to be like the most kind of, uh, cover all basis, I would say some sort of like a technical with like an economics background probably helps. Is that, is that helpful? Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, we'll get to you in a sec. I think you, yeah, new, new question, yeah. Uh, I thought the first question on the slide was interesting. Like what's the nature of the work? In yeah, the okay. So who here is, okay, so I'll get to that in a second. Was it, there's there any like burning other, I'll get to that. I will definitely get to that. Questions that just even we've been we went on a roll here. So anything else that folks had? Do you have one? Yeah. I was just wondering about how locations plays a role. Yeah. Like around the West Coast. Yeah. Like a lot of stuff happens yeah, that's true. So depending on the so I think in the world of finance, right? It is true. I would say like seventy five percent of the jobs that are coming out for undergrad are happen to be in New York, right? Just by virtue of being the financial or if you're looking at the U S. and obviously abroad it's London and Frankfurt um, and other places like you know. Hong Kong. Um, I think being not in the East Coast or New York has, I would spin it as both a positive and negative for you guys, right? So I think as a, as a ne let's start with the negative is that you may not have as many, as much like cross connectivity to the street in terms of people. A, you probably don't have as many people graduating from Stanford going into finance, right? So that's number one. Number two, you probably don't have as many alums <laughs> coming back and kind of doing sessions like these. Number three, um, Firms may be like slightly more reluctant, especially some of the funds. I think a lot of them would come to Stanford because of the caliber of its program, but it may not have as many like opportunities for one-on-one -on -one interactions, et cetera. So those are all like the cons of being out here. I think on the pros side, you go you go to a terrific school, um, you're getting like great educations, and there are still a lot of firms that are out here. You know, there's you guys have all these informationals, et cetera. So I would say leverage as much as you can out of those things. So people are bringing teams to campus. Um, in order to do that. So like develop those relationships. It's going to be a smaller team because it's going to be a small group of people from a Stanford than like a Wharton or whatever, right, undergrad. So I think, I think develop those relationships really hard. I just noticed that once we've got at Goldman, for instance, to the intern interview stage, like all backgrounds kind of are similar. So if you're able to get to that point and then you can differentiate yourself, it doesn't matter like what school, you, I mean obviously it's a great school, but it, it doesn't matter that you don't have like an institutional finance factory like a Columbia or a Wharton does. At the end of the day, you're, you're at the table and you guys are terrific students. So I'd say like use it kind of to your advantage. Not as many people come out here. So more onus on you to reach out and build those relationships. But frankly, because they're not out here, they're probably going to be more willing to get on the phone and you know whatever with you. I would say at some point over your you know, networking process, if you are really keen on New York, like line up like four or five or six informationals and just go to New York. You know, just go out there and have discussions with people that kind of shows a different, I, I know it's hard to do like systematically or just have those like over the phone or whatever. I, I my heart of hearts, we've recruited a ton of people at GS and, and PE at, from Stanford. It's, it's, it, it hasn't at all in my mind been a negative because everyone comes out here, you know, you have school recruiting teams that kind of take care of you guys. I would say probably like, you know, for the funds that are kind of on the quant side or whatever that, you, he, that, that was alluded to earlier, maybe it's a little bit harder, but there I would leverage your, your networks, your <coughs> alumni base, et cetera, and just get a seat at the table whatever way you can. It doesn't really matter. You know, you, you, you have to get a seat at the table and it's like on you, what channels that you use. I don't, I don't think the location one is a huge thing. Uh, the other thing is actually, frankly, like Menlo has, if you're looking at M&A, there's a lot of firms like Morgan Stanley, et cetera, who have, you know, Goldman, et cetera, who have offices out here that you can build relationships with and they would love to get Stanford people out there. So I just kind of say, just spin it in a positive way and, and then kind of go get it. Is that, is that helpful? Yeah, so yeah. it's not like they recruit only for their Western No, Western. no, no, no. I, I've, I know people, we've placed people, I think there's probably more propensity to place people on their, onto the West Coast offices if they're from like a Berkeley or Stanford or, or you know one of these schools, but that's just becomes end of the day preference of the candidate. The candidate's like, well, I, I've been in California my whole life, like I don't want to, I don't want to leave. Um, but there's as many people from the East Coast who want to work in tech banking or whatever on the on the West Coast. So, um, it, it yeah, and and if you say I want to work in New York, I'll say yeah, you should. You, if if you want to be in finance and if you want to be in that particular avenue in finance, 
I think it may make, it may make sense to go work in New York for a summer or for the first couple years of your career, right? So I, I don't, I've never seen it as a disadvantage, to be honest. Um, yeah. What advice would you give to freshman students who want to get a head start in the finance world? Oh, wow, this is like the coverall basis. Yeah, 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 okay. So look, I think, I think the cu couple things I'll say, um, one is explore, right? Like explore, question is what advice would you give freshman students who kind of want to get into the finance space? I think, I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you are, look, you, if you don't understand kind of why you want to get into, into any career that you want to get into, uh, based on the information that you know. You may decide five years from now you made a wrong decision, that's a different thing. But I think explore both from a point of what are the career options that are available to me, but also explore from the sense of like, what is it that really excites me about the job that I do? So in order to do that, I think you should just take a critical eye into um, what have been the things that I've done that have like, um, I've liked and enjoyed. Why have I enjoyed those things that I've done? Like, what do I find really challenging? What are the types of problems I want? To, like, whatever those things are, like start making a list, start, and then see if those things align with these careers you want to do. Then if that determines that you want to do finance, and this gets back to the question on banking versus P, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Um, if that aligns with that, then I think what you need to do is then, all right, you've kind of, on this exploratory path, the second step is like pre preparation and then like differentiation, right? So there, the, the advice I gave earlier, reach out to people in the industry, start networking with people, like understanding what the jobs are, putting your name out there and coming across like a you know, decent candidate um, who kind of knows what they're talking about. And then number three is developing an interest in finance and showing that, right? So I would say recommend to every freshman, sophomore, junior in the room, like start subscribing to like the deal book, the Wall Street Journal, et cetera. I think the more you can start, if finance is something you guys want to do, I think just understanding the types of deals that are going on, what's going on in this space, how, you know, what, what X, Y, and Z means, all those things become really important as you then get to the point of having conversations with people in the industry. Just like in tech, if you want to like learn like what's going on in the tech world, you kind of want to learn what's going on in the business world. Um, and one question I got asked as a like, as corollary to that question is like, um, w you know, I, I, I don't know, um, hey, welcome. Um, I don't know like what, uh, what industries I want to look at or whatever the case might be. I think then you can take kind of a introspective approach on like, what do I really enjoy? Like, do I enjoy like learning about tech, 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 technology? So, so now I've determined I want to be in finance. The question is, what sub-industry do I like explore? Like, is it healthcare? Is it, you know, whatever you can start as you look at deals in that space, like be like, oh, this is really interesting. I like healthcare or I like technology because I innately like want to solve these problems, et cetera, whatever those might be. And you may decide like finance isn't like for me for X, Y, and Z reasons, that's fine too. And you will find that in the exploratory ways. So I'd say explore yourself and careers. Number two, prepare and differentiate network, et cetera, that falls into that, understand. And then number three, like understand what's out there and that's like arming yourself with what's going on in the industry, um, as well as then starting to like then build a set of experiences. And then number four, which one, two, and three lead to is start building those experiences. So getting internships, you know, getting jobs, getting school year internships, et cetera, which I answered the question earlier, those can be very dependent on you, you know, what, what it is that you want to do and how this goes, how this thing goes forward. Is that helpful? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, wow, a lot. Um, yeah, in the back, uh, in front of Kyle. Gentleman in the white, yeah. Did you have one? No. Oh, it was just a, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, in the back and the front, yeah. Side. And thank you guys for coming out. I hope this was helpful. And then, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, we can do that.